Right there. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's not actually, I, I did attend a lot of conferences, but I'm not bashing developers. I have been a developer myself. And actually, this talk came up because I really got very, very grumpy. Every time, everybody is bashing the developers. They do it all wrong. They can't see that. And I got fed up with it because I was a developer. And my heart is still a developer. And I had to do the split between developing and security. I went to security, but my heart is still for the developers. And then where your heart is, when you see it bashed, it hurts. When I'm hurt, I'm grumbling. So I was in the conferences with all the people who's risk officers in nice suits, and I'm the long-haired guy with a beard and a hoodie. Sitting next to me, like decent people, and they start bashing developers, and I start getting angry. I, oh, okay, it's him again. So that's what it's talk about, because if there wouldn't be no developers, we would have not a lot of stuff we wouldn't have. So actually, my ancestry or where I come from is completely different. I don't have an idea. IT history when I went to IT. I didn't study. I quit school when I was 17, had other things to do. And I was a trained mechanic for injection molding. And injection molding, it's a very heavy iron molds that will close by the machine. Liquid uh, plastic will be injected. It cools. It opens. The parts will be retrieved by a PLC programmed robot. Sometimes even there will be inlays by the robot. Robot arm removes from the mold. Mold closes. And again, plastic will be checked in. Because it's, it's a mass production, timing is very expo uh, expensive. So the faster I can produce, the cheaper the products are. So I was a mechanic, like a, a grease monkey, oily hands. And it was really great because we did uh, uh, solely, we did electronics, we did pneumatics, hydraulics, and there were those robots. And I like when stuff happens, like things like moving by themselves, apparently. So I like the robots. And I very quickly become responsible to keep the robots running. But when you have a timing like that, there's a problem because you want to save time. So you send the robot arm into the, towards the mold before the mold has opened. And you're closing the mold before the robot arm has left the mold. So there is a slight problem timing. What if? So what if the mold is not opening? The robotic arm crashed into the mold. Robotic arm broken. Not bad. Expensive, but OK. It's really funny and impressive if the mold closing and the robot arm is still in there. And they have a different cost. But then we had a developer. He was a, the developer. So I was a grease monkey, and he was the developer. So every time the robot, robotic arm would be squeezed by the mold, he comes down and like blaming the user. What have you done this time? I couldn't stand that. It should not be possible. I like logic. And it should not be possible that this happens. So what I did, I learned myself PLC programming. I downloaded the letter diagrams. I went decompiling it and reading it. And I found a problem, a very stupid problem. And I was felt great because, hey, I found the weak spot. The remote control does not work. OK. I found it I was a hero. I was cool. So I went down there, uh, up there, to the office, because we were down there in the production area. I came there with this uh, printed out little diagram and said, I found your fault. You did it wrong. Look at me. Ha. Was he happy? <laughs> we never became really good friends. And that's somehow how security people think. I found this weakness. I broke your stuff. I am so smart. I am cooler than you. I am smarter than you because I can break your stuff. But we forget about the complexity of systems. When you write complex systems, sometimes you forget about the obvious. And you think, like, how can they not see this? How can this happen? And it becomes a complexity. It's very too complex to write a good code. If it's robotics, many parts moving at the same time. If it's an application. So when you do that much complexity, sometimes you forget to look at the detail, or it's just you don't find it until it appears. You're not trained. So bashing developers for, oh, I'm smart too because I can break the stuff. Can you build it yourself? Many times I've been security conferences, and there was another cool hacker say, oh, I'm so cool, I break stuff. 
And here I wrote a nice Python script. You can download it. Don't look at the code because I can't code. I was like, oh, no. So I can't do what you do, but I'm smarter because I can't break it. That was the same thing I did, my first code review with PLC programming. I cannot program PLCs, but I could spot the error. So sometimes I see people like, ah, oh, I miss you. How can they not do it? And the problem actually is education. That's why I love SKF project. They're not trained well. Nobody tells them until, hey, I broke it. I own you, oh, your pawn. But think about the mindset of people. Think how people's minds work. This photograph I took in Iceland, where there are much less bicycles than the Netherlands. And the only bicycle I spotted was at a place where it says, no bicycles here. It's not always obvious. Your mind works differently. It's like, don't think about a red elephant. Sometimes by not saying something, you just assume it. And to train the developers, that's the thing. Just come there and I broke it. Here, it's broken. And not be able to say how to fix it will not help them. So here they are, the really, really cool hackers. I really got disappointed by the cool hackers because they're like, oh, I am so cool. It should be animated, but it doesn't work. I'm sorry. So I am so cool. Look at all the weapons I have to my proposal, to my availability. I am really cool. I will like have, get a big guns and shoot at your application. So hey, I'm a hacker. I have Kali installed. I use Metabloid. Hey, Amitage, everybody can hack now. Actually, I had one customer where a CEO of another company used Amitage against their server on Hail Mary without an assignment. How can you do that? It's really, really bad. So just having the tool set doesn't make you a real hacker. And I, even I was a project lead in over CTF project. I see a lot of people like, oh, I'm a cool hacker. I do CTFs and I'm a three times prize winner. Still, you know, not, not a very good, by default, security professional. Because in a CTF challenge, hey, every challenge has a vulnerability. Otherwise, it would not be a challenge. And all you need to do is find the spot, get your token, upload it. You don't have to understand the vulnerability. You just have to exploit it. And mitigation? No, I don't think about it, mitigation. And most important, there's no write-up. So hey, I need a token, I got my points. So that's a lot of hackers I see. So you're the cool hacker. Like, oh, I'm cool. But is it like that? It's like, yawn. Developers don't wait for you to have the cool story. They wait for you to help them. Breaking stuff only means you had the right tool. Maybe not for, and maybe I'm grumpy, I'm getting old, I don't know what it is. But I teach at the universities and there's still, like, the generation gap gets bigger and bigger. And it's very hard to find developers doing security. And people actually in the Netherlands, the pond is empty. There are no developers doing security stuff. I said, of course not. What do developers do? Developing. And I see that developers in the Netherlands had a big problem. Because you're a junior developer for half a year, and then you become media developer for two years, and then you have to be senior developer, otherwise you are slow. And then you're senior developer. What is your uh, career path? Being more senior, uh, senior developer? No, then you have to be an architect or a, or a manager, because then you get more money. So we are killing so much knowledge because there's no career path to developers. You're a senior developer and then move on, otherwise that's your life. So appreciating developers, being good and doing that for years is something that misses. And for security tests, it's even worse because, hey, I'm the cool guy with all the nice tools and I hack stuff. But experience, they lack. What a lot of young people lack, and that's normal, it should be like that. It's understanding of communication. Like, we in the IT world, we're not the best people to talk. Be honest. We are very confident in front of our computer, somewhere in the basement, no people around us, and me in the machine. But we have to learn to talk. That's one thing. But we have to learn to talk to other people with other mindsets, with other understanding. So they come with a checklist. This is all broken. Ha. So I'm a developer. What do I do with this? Yeah, good. It's broken. I get a report saying, oh, this is all bad. 
I'm missing in the report what is good. What have you done? What didn't you do? I see in the reports, and it's something in the Netherlands, functional testing is really on a high standard. We think, oh, functional testers, they're not technical. And definitely they're not going to do with security. But they're really good at estimating how much they tested on an application. When I have a security test, there's always time box, because security is expensive. We do black box tests, one week. For one week black box test, how much testing do you get? Because there's budget intake, half day gone. Reporting, one and a half days gone. So we have three days left. Ooh, what do we do in three days? Running tools, isn't it? And then what do you do? If you're tired, ah, let's find the false positives and skip them, and then you get a report. So when I receive a report, I almost never get the whole intermediate files. Because I want to see what did you do? What you haven't done. So if a developer then thinks, hey, let's try it myself, I write, I get the same tool, the same version, I run the same test, and the uh, hacker only say, those are the uh, things you have to fix, and don't say, hey, these are the false positives, the irrelevant findings, I get a difference in findings. So what happens to those? Have you seen them? Have you evaluated them? So in the report also should say, those findings have been reported by that tool, but they were not uh, real issues. I missed that. And we get a top secret PDF report. Cool. What can I do with a report? I can file it in bin. Because, yes, I have a link with the payload. So I can log on to my application, because then the link does not work. So I have to click the link and hope the application is the same state so this payload works. Then I can see what is broken. And I get a general description of what should be fixed. Does it help me as developer? Not really. I need a description. I need what has been done. Understand, a lot of the payloads don't work. Why? It's a dynamic application. So if the payload works, many times it's depending on the state of the dynamic application. So on the PDF? Yeah, thanks. It's for management. Nice dashboard. The duh. Help me. Enlighten me. Talk to me. Because when you get the reports, I get in line. What are we paying our developers for? To develop. But they are bashed because developers have not much friends. Who of you is a developer? Be proud of it. I see somebody shaking hands like this. Like, yes, I am a developer. Be proud to be a developer because you make people proud of what they do. They do a better job. If it's a developer, if it's a project manager, it's a toilet lady. The moment I appreciate them, they will care about the work. That's what you need. People do care about what they do. And good developers care about the work. But they are bashed so many times. Why? Because all the different priorities. The users don't like developers. Like, oh, look at this. How could we have done this forever? It has to be more intuitive. It has to be more shiny, flashy application. It has to be delivered yesterday. So they're never good. And they're too expensive. You will be outsourced to far away or near shore. Nobody's happy with developers. I still really rely on them. So that's great. Our blood and sweat and tears is in our products. What you get, I think, you get bashed. You're out of time. I'm out of time. Because we sell the project. Yeah, you said you need three weeks. We sold it for two weeks. Please make it happen. I had a sales guy in my previous company when I was a software architect. I was a developer. They had an estimate from how many hours you think this application will take to complete. So I gave it back to them. So he comes back to me like, sorry, it has to be 250 hours less. Not very easy. Like, okay, stripe something through. Here you go. You save 250 hours. So he was happy and walks away, but then he realized he talks to me. What did you just do? See, you have no web interface. He said, it's a web application. Oh, yes, it's a web application. You cannot do that. So why? You got my judgment. That's what you asked to. Now you say to me, it's not good. OK, I trusted it. And people are like, oh, I will talk to your manager. I say, OK, have fun. He knows me. 
appreciate what they do and accept their experience. So they have to continue delivery. We work hard. We do DevOps. It's really good. So first we learn to talk to testers. So like developers and testers understood. Testers are people. We can talk to them. Now we have the operations even earlier. That was great because we were developing stuff being tested by testers, and then we throw it down the basement to operations. So now operations are integrated. So we have continuous delivery. I hear companies like 70 release a day. Then comes security. Stop. We first do a code review, then we do a dynamic test, then we do a hacker test, and then you get approval, and then you can release. It does not work. Early integration. And why it does not work? A, for it holds the whole chain, and B, you are a developer. You are in your code, in your head, in your code, the function that you're developing now, and then something comes by, you know, three months ago, you developed this piece of code, it's no good. Hey, I lost my whole thread on things I was working now. I had to think three months ago. What did I do then? I have a very rare perceptive time. It has been, it is, and it will be. I have no idea where I've been three weeks ago. I know where I've been yesterday, I guess. But on when you're developing, to think all the uh, complexity of the code back for three weeks ago, and then you have to fix something. It not only takes the time to fix, it also takes you out of the current process and you have to get all the way back in the old process and think about how to fix it. So security should not be like the ministry of no, that's what I hear many times. I come to companies and help them about implementing security firm and life cycles, early response. And they're like, oh, you do security. Why? Because, yeah, you still say no. Say, no, I'm here for you. When I do code reviews, I always claim I have to be talking to the team. And head managers are like, no, no, we all just want a code review. You don't have to talk to the team. Say, okay, I don't do that. Why are you not doing that? I don't do a code review against the team. I do it together with the team. Who knows the code best? Who knows the code better than the developer? Come on. It's their code. It's their capture. So we fail the way we approach them. Security fails the way how to deliver the reports to them. So let's think about how we can improve it. Talk to them. I know it's very scary to talk to other people. I was not a good talker before. But I got passionate about security, I got passionate about development, and what a heart is full of, it comes out of the mouth, what they say in the Netherlands. And I love developing, and I love security, I love both. So start to, start, to, start to talk to people. Understand each other. And don't talk always about security. Talk about things they are concerned. I did a lot of uh, reviews, intake, stuff like that. And when you're there, the first meeting's always with the manager. What do you hear when you talk to the professionals and the manager is there? Everything the manager wants them to say. It's not that what I want to hear. <laughs> Actually, I think my previous company should have paid me for being a smoker. Because the moment you go outside and, and light a cigarette, then you hear all the frustrations because they know you understand them. You know you have been in the same place. You have been a developer. I'm not a security guy. Come to school, have high, uh, cool uh, tools, and hack yourself. No, I have been a developer. I felt the pain. So you're equal. It's out there, no manager around, lightning a cigarette. You hear all the frustrations. When they understand you feel the pain, you can be actually their crowbar to get things changed. Their code improved. They have no time internally. Because you're the external expert telling the management you have to fix this. So you're actually helping the development team to improve their code. They have brains. You just have to trigger them. To trigger them in the way they understand, they have to be triggered. And that's something I really, when I got involved in OWASP in 2006, it's that long ago, I'm getting old. I really wasn't OWASP because OWASP was there for developers. It was not a security conference or a hacking tool. No, it was a community of developers helping each other to write secure code. And our first mission statement was really black and white. It was the finding, fighting, and preventing of unsecure code. We learned, we understood that it's not possible to make 100% unsecure uh, secure code. So we changed the mission statement, I think, back in 2008 and saying from 
make the risk visible to the business so they can do the right decisions. But what I found in all was, I think a few years later, we had categorization of our project and guidelines. It was builder, break, and defender. I was a developer. I was not Bob the Builder. I'm a developer. So even all of us, coming from the development environment, I think did not really understand what developers are. You developers, are you builders? I didn't feel myself a builder. I'm a developer. It's something different. For a builder, I see somebody who put bricks on each other, not thinking. They actually, they do have to think. But I'm creative. I work. So make them the heroes. And you have to help them the heroes. You always think the heroes they have all these capabilities, the knowledge, but every hero has been born blank and he needs to get knowledge. Make the developers your security heroes. It's all a way how to present it. Hug them. Care for them, love them. Don't do it with me, I don't like hugging. Don't be the guy who kicks the child. Don't be the bully. I said, the developers' blood, sweat, and tears, the passion, it's in the, if you appreciate them, it's in the code. It's their work. I was this idiot who spent eight hours, because I was allowed to work longer, at my office, coding, and there was stuff I didn't like. I had to fix. So I went home, I spent the whole night to improve my own code, because I want to be proud of my code. And I know, a year later, I looked back at my code, and was like, oh, no. What did I do a year ago? That's good. When you look back and you code like a year, a half year ago, you think, oh my god, what did I do? It's good. It means you're improving. So be the child doctor. Look at that child and see what's good and where it needs help. Not kicking it. Who has children? Who has the nicest children? The people with beautiful children. <laughs> I will. The coders, the application, is their children. And when you come there and kick the children, you don't have to wonder why they're upset. So we work together with them, evaluate their children, and tell them where your children needs more care, more attention, to be the best and perfect, most perfect children they can have. So understand them, talk to them, understand what is their business, what is their tool set. I come to companies and ask them, what do you do about security? And they still exist and saying, nothing. And I can say, I don't believe you. What? No, we do have nothing with security. Yes, because it not always has a security label on it. Even functional testers, they do, oh, security, no, we don't do security. Because we as security guys, we did this created this world of mystics. Security is cryptography, it's complex. It's like, ooh, black magic. Because when you get a security test, it stays the development team, and then external or even in a different department, there's a security team, all dressed in black. They're doing the black magic. And out comes this report. So what is the developer's tool set? What do they use? They care about quality. And actually, quality and security is not that different. Because it's about what the application should not be able to do. They have their own dashboards, their metrics. Like uh, Glenn always said, they have the code quality tools, they have the performance check tools, and that's all kind of security things. If they tweak them, they're even better. When you Java, you have PMD, Checkstar, Findbox. And, oh, yeah, but it's not really a security tool. Yes, but it improves. It takes away the low-hanging fruit. And you integrate it in the development street. So, the moment I check the code in for Glenn, it's five minutes later, they get a feedback like, hey, well done. Do you get a well done feedback? Because we forget it. You always send a feedback, oh, that's bad. Bam, smash that. Also, give the thumbs up, hey, you checked in code, we checked it, it's good, thank you. Appreciate them. Make them be loved. Make them constructive, improving it bit by bit. Rather than bashing them, saying this is not good. Reports. I said about PDF reports. I really, yeah, that's a frustration of mine. Many companies, I, I do teach developers, and you, 
And uh, say, how do we deliver the report? Say, oh, by email. Don't they tell you about the report? Uh, go sitting there with you, as we say in the Netherlands, put your pants down and telling the truth. I oh, know that will cost extra. If there's a security guy who does a code review, a security review, and is not willing to explain what he did, what's going on? What's the worst of this? Is he afraid to share knowledge? Security knowledge is not that special anymore. And people said to me, wait a minute, you're going to customers, you explain them about the tools and the methodologies and everything? I say, yes, I do. But then you will be obsolete at one time. I say, oh, I'm really looking forward to that. Putting back my seat, put my feet on the table, pour myself a nice whiskey, and all is solved. But I think we will have this when we have unicorns, rainbows, and fairies. Because we have so much new developers every year. And what are they are trained for? How they are trained? Look at the most simple code example, Hello World. It's flawed. There are bugs in it. Brian Chess, when he worked for 45, he went to the code orders from Java 24 hours, whatever language 24 hours, and he went to all the code examples and said, look at this, this is wrong. It's sec not secure. You know what they say? Yes, but we have a little remark saying this code is not meant to be in production. This will not work. I teach at universities. I tell them about prepared statement, parameterized queries. And DBA say, yes, that's how we as DBA want you to talk to our database. But it's not the security, as it is. And then I see the, uh, the prof like the head down. And they're like, but this is how he taught us to develop. This comes because the teachers on universities, they have to cope up with the new technology. So they get a, whatever language in 24 hours, they have to learn it, making from classes and then teach people. They're not experienced developers. The developers should be trained by developers. New technologies like app development. Who knew? Who is developing apps? Anybody? The younger people. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I know the teams that are like 25, 26 years old and I have a son at that age. That's like funny. Like, I could be your father. <laughs> German accent always helps to get that, uh, attention. But they're like, oh, one team, that guy is 52, and they were like, oh, hey, that's cool. We have a 52-year-old guy in our team. He's doing cool stuff, app development. Okay. He's doing Java for 15 years. Yeah, but now he's doing mobile apps. Hey, come on. It's not all that new. It's flashy. And you need the new guys who are pushing the boundaries. They're really going for it. But when everybody, the young guys, young girls, run down the cliff, you need the older guys say, maybe it's a smart idea. So variation in age and gender, it's very, very important for a good team, for the security team and the development team. So to make a story, when I deliver a security report, there's a write-up in it. And I'm not a good book writer. I cannot write novels, otherwise I would have a different job, I guess. But tell them what is how I experienced the application. In my write-up, I write, this application, I just, I, shortly in short sentence, I write down what I think. What did I experience? When I click this, it's so. Hmm, there's an app starting up. Let's see in the, in the app code. Hey, there is an upload functionality. Oh, I cannot upload a file bigger than 10 MB, and only three lines will be read. What will happen if I do 10 files with 5 MB with one line in it? Make them understand your thinking process, so if they can replay it, they will much more understand than it's wrong. Tell the story, tell it nicely. Tell it personally. I really have a hard time understanding why security people charge a lot of money for the security test, and they change additionally for re delivering the report one-to-one. -one. It's a team effort. Security cannot be done by one. When I found my secure task force in my previous company, and one internal uh, guy said, oh, we have a, uh, a project going on, 
security might be interesting. It's not really in the requirements. I always love this. Huh? There's no security requirement. So can we have one of your team? So I said, OK. And the guy from the team called me, like, Martin, you have to explain it again. So I went there and said, what's the problem? They are developing, and they expect me to do the security. Not working. It's a team effort. Even my own son, my older son, he's now a Java developer. I remember when he started coding, and I was telling him about object orientation and code quality. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, dad. So now he started Java development. He's like, ah, you talked about Jenkins. You talked about uh, Sonar Cube. Now he's interested. So that's for me, the next stage, here is a security book. And he's like, thank you. So every time I see him, he's like, how far are you always book? And he's really like, but as he said, taught me that security is what the other guys do. Security you cannot give to other people. Security is everybody's responsibility. It's holistic. Make the team go well. If you are happy about the functionality, make them happy about it. It only can be doing what it should do. There has been a law case in America where an insurance company has been hacked. And of course, there's no internal development. So they asked the software uh, contract company, hey, you delivered us the application of software. It's hacked. And they say, yeah, but there's no security requirement. It's not working like that anymore because they said, hey, wait a minute. We are insurance. We have a lot of money. We sue you because that are all known vulnerabilities. And you have them in your code, so you should know. So responsibility will change. Safety will change. Understand your code. When you have a, func uh, a functionality described, by default, you should do something else. We also are in a, time, in a technology living time. I come to companies about uh, integrating security in the development life cycle. What everybody thinks about stars and SARS. Technology to solve our problem. I had a guy from the Netherlands Bank, it's a big organ about for banking in the Netherlands. So I explained about code review, static code analysis. He goes, oh, that's cool. So bad code in, good code comes out. <laughs> nope. OK, let's start again. To make them understand. A tool helps you, but a tool doesn't do anything by himself. The tool will help you, and that's what you need. Tools are easy access, easy report, understandable report, and early feedback. But the, all the tools out there, they only can find technical problems, bugs. What they can't do is flaws, functional problems. A question Gary McGraw uh, normally asks the audience. So a bug is a technical problem. A flaw being a functional problem. What do you think? What's more occurrent? Who thinks there are more bugs than flaws? Nobody. Who thinks there are more flaws than bugs? That's against the tech people. Actually, it's 50-50. Half the vulnerabilities we could eliminate by differently looking at the functionality. To understand that, it's like the common sense. But though we are all focusing on the Bugs. All the technology is focusing on the bugs, security on the bugs, but the functionality you only can find by using your brain. But you can prevent it before writing a line of code by just looking at the functionality and thinking, would that be that smart? If you cannot comp explain, understandable, what you found, what the weakness is, if you cannot explain the, the problem easily and simple, Maybe you have not understand it. Just having a tool set, it's not enough. You need to understand it. That's something why OWASP, when I was in, in, uh, involved in that, has a, a, a convention with Hacking Lebea, free OWASP challenges. It's as a CTF, but it's different. Why? It's not about a gold nugget you upload. It gives three questions. When you have 10 points, the first three points go from explain the vulnerability. Another three points you get for exploit the vulnerability. But you get four points for tell us a mitigation. And this is a text answer to the real people behind it. It's more effort, but it's a great community. So there are 100 people doing the free over uh, challenges. But there are also 100 people being teacher and telling people about security. That's all we need. Thank you.